Hello and welcome to lesson 7 of the Grade 2 Theory Tutor Book. In this lesson we will learn about the tenuta sign, the portato sign, the difference between a tie, slur and phrase mark and Italian words used for performance direction. So let's start first off by looking at the tenuto sign. So this sign is called the tenuto sign. When you see this sign in a piece of music, it instructs the player to hold on to the note for its full length. And it's a little line that goes over the note. You're then asked to practice writing some of those tenotos on the line below. Then we go on to something called the portato or the semi-staccato sign. Now this happens to come up a lot in violin music um, because when you bow, you use one complete bow, so it gives you the opportunity to use the same bow over four notes. So violinists know this term very well. So this sign is called the semi-staccato sign. When you see this sign in a piece of music, it instructs the player to hold on to the note a little bit longer than a staccato note somewhere between staccatos and legatos. But just visualise um, a violinist bowing this and just doing four bows in a row, all in a down bow, or four bows in a row, all in that bow. And you get the idea of what this semi-staccato is all about. Then you're asked to write a few of these on the stave below. a little bit of discussion on what the difference is between a tie, a slur and a phrase mark. Now we covered quite extensively the difference between a tie and a slur in the grade one book but now we're actually going to join the phrase mark into this. So here's your tie joining the same note, here's your slur joining a different note. Now in a phrase mark it looks like a slur, but may cover a longer passage. This really just indicates that this is one phrase, like a phrase in spoken language. So if you're a woodwind player, for example, you would take a natural breath at the end of a phrase, like that. So this signifies really where the breathing is. And so it still applies really, I think, to piano players as well, because sometimes you want to just naturally take a breath within the music and so sometimes piano music does tend to have these phrasings in as well. An example of that can be found in this piano piece called Stanley Plays Semi Quavers and it will see that the phrase marks written over the top here. So your task here is to look at the piece below and count how many phrase marks are actually in it. Now moving on to Italian words used for performance direction. Now what you've got to remember for this exam, there's a lot of words to learn. Try and revise as many as you can because any of the following may come up. Also remember that any of the words you use for previous grades as well, including the grade one and the first steps, may come up again on this exam sheet. So you have to revise all the words that you've learned in previous grades as well. And so you've got a whole list of them shown on this page here. And that completes your lesson seven.